Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. First, please subscribe to my channel and share my videos if you like them. Also, please follow me on Instagram at Antonia Carlotta and support my work on Patreon, which I've linked below and in this video as well. And a special shout out to Stephen Potter. Thank you so much for your Patreon pledge. I'm always looking forward to your comments on YouTube and on Instagram, and it means a lot that you support my work, so thank you. All Quiet on the Western Front is one of Universal's most famous and most important early films. It came out in 1930, and it's widely considered one of the greatest anti-war films of all time. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that before making this video, I hadn't read the book and I hadn't actually seen the whole movie. I'd only seen sort of clips here and clips there, but I am proud to say that in researching for this, I have now read both the book and seen the movie. All Quiet is based on the book by Eric Maria Remarque. It was first released in a German newspaper in 1928 and then in book form in 1929. It sold more than 2.5 million copies in its first 18 months. And everyone wanted to make this film. But Carl Lemley actually flew to Germany to meet with Remarque in person and convince him to let Universal make it. I read that Carl had also wanted to simultaneously make a German version of the film, but the actor and the director that he wanted weren't able to leave Germany at the time. All Quiet opens with a quote from the book that I find really powerful. It says, This story is neither an accusation nor a confession, and least of all, an adventure for death is not an adventure for those who stand face to face with it. It will try simply to tell of a generation of men who, even though they may have escaped its shells, were destroyed by the war. The film follows a group of young soldiers during World War I. The book starts in the middle of the war and fills things in with flashbacks, but the movie goes pretty much chronologically. So inspired by this teacher at their school who can't stop going on and on about how great and brave and noble it is to fight for your country, this group of kids enlist in the army and they think that they're gonna come home these war heroes and that women are gonna be fawning all over them, but when they get out there, they find that it's totally different. It's dark and it's scary. The conditions are terrible and the food is scarce and their friends keep dying. And no one at home either really understands what they're going through. Everybody overall is really uninformed about the war. All Quiet on the Western Front was more than two and a half hours when it first came out, but the currently restored version is closer to two hours and 10 minutes. Because not all theaters had adapted sound technology when it first came out, both silent and sound versions were made. The film was directed by Lewis Milestone, who had previously directed Two Arabian Nights, which won him the Best Comedy Director Oscar in the first ever Academy Awards. For the lead, there was a big debate about whether they wanted a big star or somebody who was relatively unknown to really emphasize the, the everyman-ness of that main character. And they ultimately went somewhere in the middle. They auditioned everybody from Douglas Fairbanks Jr. to even the author himself, Eric Maria Remarque, but they ultimately settled with Lou Ayers, who was relatively unknown at the time, but after this went on to be a big star, as well as a big pacifist, and both of those things because of this movie. Other actors include Louis Wolheim, John Ray, Arnold Lucy, Ben Alexander, Russell Gleason, Harold Goodwin, and Slim Somerville. I thought it was a little funny, a little bit sad, that comedian Zasu Pitts was originally cast as the lead's mother, but everyone was so used to seeing her as funny that as soon as she came on screen, the audience laughed. And obviously, that's not what anyone was going for in this film, so she had to be recast, and actress Beryl Mercer took the role. It cost about one and a quarter million dollars to make All Quiet, which was a lot at the time anyway, but it was an especially big deal because the stock market had just crashed. So it was a huge gamble to be putting that much into a film like this. Carl Lemley Jr. was quoted saying, this will either be the greatest movie in history or the biggest flop of the year. And luckily he was pretty much right with his first guess. This movie also marks the time when Carl Lemley Jr. was taking control of Universal, and he wanted to put an emphasis on great stories as opposed to just relying on big names. He was quoted saying that he knew that All Quiet wasn't a conventional story and it was different than the material that the industry was used to working with, but that he felt it had human appeal and truth and color, and he thought that that was enough to attract audiences. 
The film had its premiere at Carthay Circle in Los Angeles on April 21st, 1930, and then at the Central Theater in New York on April 29th. The film made more than $3 million and got incredible reviews. Louis Walheim, who acted in the film, spoke at length about the great labor that every single person on the cast and crew put into making this film. He said that they knew that they had a great responsibility to turn this story into the best movie that they could, and that it was vitally important to get the message across well. The movie was nominated for four Academy Awards, and it won two for Best Picture and Best Director. And these were Universal's very first Oscars. But as great as the movie did, it also faced its share of issues. And I kind of get it because this movie can be grueling at times. I don't think I realized that films in this day were so graphic. And I guess it kind of makes sense because it's pre-code, so there weren't censorship guidelines in place yet. But I think I still had this idea that all films back then were more restrained. There are some scenes that are really graphic, that are really long. I can see why the film had such an impact when it came out. Carl Lemley absolutely loved his home country of Germany, and he thought that All Quiet was going to be a great thing for them. He thought that it would really help to humanize the German soldiers and make them out to be more than just the enemy after World War I. But Hitler was rising to power, and he absolutely hated the movie. Joseph Goebbels, who became his Minister of Propaganda, publicly burned Remark's book, and he commanded the Nazis to release mice and stink bombs and sneezing powder at screenings of the movie. And he would encourage violence, and supposedly the Nazis would yell Juden film, which translates to Jewish film, as they did all this. All Quiet was banned in Germany for being prejudicial to national prestige and for making the country look weak. And it was later banned in Italy, Austria, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, New Zealand, and France, and censored in many more. Because of its graphic violence and its strong anti-war message, any country that was gearing up for war didn't want anyone to see it. There are a lot of moments that hit your gut in the movie, but one of my favorite is when the soldier goes back to his class and he says, When it comes to dying for your country, it's better not to die at all. There are millions out there dying for their country. And what good is it? All Quiet on the Western Front still consistently makes lists of the greatest and most influential films of all time. And it's a great example of the power that film can have, that it could cause entire nations to ban it that history could have been changed because of the message in a movie, that's pretty incredible. This movie also really helped to solidify Carl Lemley Jr.'s place in the industry, that he was worthy of taking over Universal, that he could match up against the rest of Hollywood. If you haven't yet seen this movie, I highly, highly recommend you do. Just be ready for it. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will be posting more facts that I couldn't fit in this video in my Instagram story. So go check those out at Antonia Carlotta. Thanks again. Bye.